on top of the default ability in the player's handbook, the standard human now also have human determination. You gain advantage on one d20 roll per day. Human versatility. Choose to gain one proficiency between a skill, a tool, a weapon, or light armor, or an expertise on a skill. The standard human, the one with plus one to all attributes and nothing else, is both underwhelming in mechanics and lacking in flavor. In this video, I'm gonna discuss why it is and propose a homebrew fix that satisfies both the slack in mechanics and flavor for this race. I don't intend for my homebrew to make the standard human another busted race, but to make it a viable option and make it less of a trap option for people who doesn't look too much into the nitty gritty mechanics and pick things at character creation more so for the flavor. In order to achieve that though, we have to talk about mechanics. Compare the standard human to the half-elf, which is also known for its many ability score bonuses. The standard human has 6 plus 1s, which adds up to 6 additional bonuses. The half-elf has 1 plus 2 and 2 plus 1s, which adds up to 4 additional bonuses to your stats. So, from a quick glance, the standard human should have 2 extra bonuses in comparison to the half-elf, but and it's a big but. After Tasha's quarter of everything introduced the ratio ability score customization, the half elf can always choose the three most important stats to apply their bonuses, while the standard human is stuck with spreading their stats thin. Okay, let's put the theory mumbo jumbo aside and go to a concrete example. Let's try to make a standard human paladin and a half-elf paladin. Both races are known for its many ability scores, so it would fit well for paladin, which is a multiple ability score dependent class. On the screen here, I've prepared two stat blocks, one for the standard human paladin and the other for the half-elf paladin. Both are reasonably optimized, but not too optimized. I think these kind of stat blocks can be expected from a casual playing table. I've tried to match the two stat blocks to each other as close as possible for the purpose of comparison. Let's see what we have. The standard human here has a plus one to every stat. The half elf, I'll still leave the plus two to the charisma. And I'm gonna leave the plus ones to strength and constitution, which are the three primary ability of the paladin class. In the end, we have a strength score of 16 on both stat blocks, dexterity 10, 10, Constitution 14, 14, so far so good, Intelligence 9 compared to 8. So we see at this point that the standard human has one more bonus in intelligence compared to the half elf, which is to be expected. Wisdom 12, 12, Charisma 16, 16, total points 27, total points 27. So I believe I've done all the map right. Feel free to pause the video to check the map and let me know in the comments. But wait, why does the human only has one more point in comparison to the half-elf? Didn't we establish earlier that the standard human should have two more in comparison to the half-elf? Here's the problem. Because in point by, the higher an ability score already is, the more costly it takes to increase that even further. We see here that the plus two from the half-elf is doing a lot of work. If we ha only have a plus one, we would need to increase our charisma score to 15, which costs two more points. But because we have a plus two from the ratio, we can save that two points. And where are those two points going to? They are going to one, my wisdom. You can see here, the standard human only has 11 wisdom, why the half elf has 12 wisdom. This balances out the plus one ratio bonus from the human to the wisdom. The remaining point, I'm putting that into dexterity. Once again, the standard human only has nine dexterity, while the half elf has 10 dexterity. This again balances out the plus one to the dexterity that the human has. So all in all, this plus two to charisma in the half elf in this case was three plus one from the human side. A plus one to charisma, a plus one to wisdom, and a plus one to dexterity. I'm just gonna fit over the setting here a little bit to show you what I'm saying from a different angle. If I decrease this plus two to a plus one, give wisdom a plus one, and dexterity a plus one, then I readjust 
dexterity, wisdom score, charisma score slightly. Again, end up with 27.5 and at the score exactly the same as before for the half elf. Thus, we see that the half elf ability score spread. A plus 2, plus 1, and plus 1 is equivalent to a spread of 5 plus 1s. 5 plus 1s! The standard human has 6 plus 1s. Let that sink in. A similar case can be made for the rolling for stats method. This is the chart on the probability of rolling a certain number if you use the 46 drop 1 method. We can see that most of the time, the result will be somewhere in the highest peak here. And once again, a ratio bonus on a higher number is much more valuable than a ratio bonus on an average number. And in a similar line of logic, a plus 2 ratio bonus on a high number is much more valuable than a plus 1 ratio bonus on a high number. Now the picture is clearer. In practice, the standard human only has one more ratio bonus than the half elf. And worse still, that ratio bonus is going to a dumb stat. There's no way to swap that around. And what does the half elf has that the standard human doesn't? Dark vision, fey ancestry, and two more skill proficiencies. Would I trade the one ability score bonus to a dumb stat for dark vision? 8 to 9 times out of 10. Would I trade that one ability score bonus to your dumb stat for all three of Fey Ancestry, Dark Vision, and two skill proficiencies any day of the week. And that's what happened in practice too. Why pick the standard human for a multiple ability dependent class when you can pick the half elf instead? All right, let's touch on the flavor a little bit here. The player's handbook describes the human race as being more diverse than any other races. Humans are the most adaptable and ambitious people among the common races. They have widely varying tastes, morals, and customs in the many different lands where they have settled. Very flavorful. But what does the stat block say about the standard human? Is that they don't have any signature ability. They are all average and averagely the same. Where's the part about being adaptable? Where's the part about ambition? Now that we have established the standard human race has trash mechanics and no flavor, let's get into my homebrew fix. In this homebrew fix, I'll try to make the standard human roughly equivalent in power to the other races while also including the missing flavors described in the player's handbook. Now, the standard human, in addition to all the default abilities in the player's handbook, also have human determination. Avid follower of the D&D Unearthed Akana may recognize the inspiration for my homebrew changes. The ability reads, Human Determination You are filled with a determination that can draw the unreachable within your reach. When you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can choose to do so with advantage, regardless of whether you have disadvantage on the roll or not. Once you use this ability, you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest once per day. The second addition to the race is human versatility. Choose one option below. One skill proficiency, one weapon proficiency, one two proficiency, two languages, one skill or two expertise if you already have that proficiency elsewhere. Light armor proficiency. And whenever you gain a class level that provides an ability score improvement feature, you can swap an option you gained from this feature with another option provided by this feature. I believe this represents the different training and knowledge that humans from different cultures bring to the table. Now, with the addition of human determination and human versatility, the standard human is truly representing a ambitious, versatile, and adaptable race. With this homebrew change, let's look at our mechanic comparison again. The standard human. The half elf. The standard human still has that one more bonus to the dumb stat over the half elf. They have now also have human determination and human versatility. The half elf, dark vision, fey ancestry, and two skills. The plus one to a dumb stat is still a lot worse than dark vision, but that's fine. The standard human has some more features now. Human determination. I expect that to be about doubly as good as the fey ancestry, maybe a little bit better because you could go for multiple days without encountering a charmed effect. 
and the human determination can be applied to both saving throws, ability checks, and attack rolls. However, when you encounter a charmed effect though, you may have to save against this multiple times, and the human determination only gives you one advantage per day. The part about cancelling disadvantage is nice, but I think that's quite situational. And lastly, let's compare the human versatility with the two skill proficiency bonuses from the half elf. I think from a day to day basis, the human versatility feature provides a bit less than the half elf, but the versatility ha, that the feature provides, and the fact that it gives light amro proficiency, which is a very rare feature from a race, and that it gives an expertise on a skill which is extremely rare if not the only one I think it's the only one feature that gives an expertise on the skill for a race I think that makes up for it and that also makes the standard human a unique choice at character creation we've accomplished what we set out to do human determination represent their ambition on docking forward doing things their way and human versatility represents well, human versatility. This standard human video is part of TS Balance Homebrew, where I try to make homebrew fixes that are simple, balanced, and flavorful for player options in D&D 5e. Click this video to watch my Warlock Invocation Homebrew for more flexible spellcasting.